Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Paranormal Highway. Today's interview is Bigfoot Michigan Rob. This is Rob's story about his Bigfoot encounter. Now, again, I'm going to express something to you guys, especially if you're this is the first time you're here. I am not here to convince any of you that Bigfoot's real. Rob's not telling a story to convince you that it's real. A lot of you here do believe in Bigfoot and the Sasquatch. And my idea to learn more about the Bigfoot, because I have had an encounter myself as a kid, and I'm trying to understand it myself. And part of me to understand the Bigfoot is listen to different people's stories to see, is there something sane about the story or are they all different? So this is, by doing these interviews, it's like clues for myself to understand of what did I see? What did I experience? So in a lot of ways, I'm using Rob, his story to help me out. But that's why we listen to these interviews, right? To help you out because you never know if you're a skeptic or whatever. You're out in the woods by yourself and you start hearing something. You start seeing something, feeling something is off. Well, you never know. These stories might be able to help you. Don't know. So guys, kick back, get some coffee, get some, if you want a beer, get a beer, popcorn. Now, this is your first time here. If this is your first time, this is what I do. I'm going to let Rob come up by himself. We will not interrupt him at all. He'll tell his story. And once we get his story, myself and Anthony will jump back up, ask him questions only on the story that he told us, and I'll give you my final thoughts. So, this is very exciting. Um, you guys are going to love this. So, I'm going to pop myself down, and you're going to see big hello everybody yeah uh, thanks eric for having me on yeah bigfoot michigan rob that's me uh bmr i uh of course that's my channel name for those of you that haven't subscribed and eric when he started this video said he, uh, you know talking about he likes to learn more about bigfoot and everyone has their stories and i've told this story many times but you know for me the reason i started my channel this is like a therapeutic thing every time i do the story so I'm glad to be on and share it with those that have not had a Bigfoot encounter. Um, my encounter started, uh, my first encounter, really the only Bigfoot encounter that I've had was in 2018, the summer, uh, in June. And uh, I went fishing in the Manistee National Forest, which is uh, in Lake Cadillac. And uh, I went fishing on, on Lake Cadillac. What I did, you guys, uh, my girlfriend, Cindy, not much of an outdoorsman, an outdoors person, and, you know, and I kind of wanted to surprise her, uh, take her, I wanted her to experience the outdoors. So, and she never really fished before, so I said, you know what? I surprised her. We took the three-hour trip up north to Cadillac, Michigan. Rented a small cottage, which included a small little fishing boat, almost like a skiff, if you will. Not very big, just enough for two people with a couple fishing poles. So we went on uh, on Lake Cadillac to do some fishing. We started out about 10 in the morning. Now, Lake Cadillac is kind of built up pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of nice houses, small businesses, industries kind of surround the shorelines. Um, pretty sizable lake, uh, an active lake. And a lake that I heard was a good fishing hole, a good fishing spot. And I'd never been there. So Cindy and I are fishing on Lake Cadillac. And to be honest with you guys, didn't even get a single nibble, not a bite. And again, Cindy's first time. She enjoyed being out on the boat, getting sun. But she kind of was getting a little bored with this whole fishing thing. Is we're not getting nothing. So I said, let's do some exploring. So... We started tooling around the lake. Then I came up across this canal, which connected to another lake, which is now called Lake Mitchell. So now I proceed from Lake Cadillac through the canal to Lake Mitchell. We get on Lake Mitchell. Right away, we noticed that 
there was not as much built up of homes and businesses. There was a small park. Um, the houses were further distance between each other. So it looked pretty cool. And, and the further we traveled to the southwest, we, we came upon this cove. Now this cove was nice and secluded. And this part of Lake Mitchell backs up, as I said earlier, to the Manistee National Forest. Secluded. There was not a boater around, not a fisherman around. So a nice area. So I, I, I start trolling the boat, slow down the, the boat, and we're I'm drifting like 90 feet from the shoreline. Now at this time I proceed to take my fishing pole the gear and I start putting the lures or the bait on on the fishing poles from me and Cindy and Cindy's kind of standing up looking into the forest just checking out everything it was a beautiful day I mean it, the, the forest was lush and green the sky bright blue sunny day probably about 75 degrees at this time it's maybe about 11 30 11 40 in the morning hear the birds chirping just a beautiful day Again, I'm taking care of the tackle, the fishing rod and reels. And uh, Cindy says to me, hey, Rob. I'm like, yeah, what? I think someone's throwing, boat, throwing rocks at the boat. I'm like, what? So I look up. I look to shoreline. I don't see anything. And I says, hey, Cindy, it's probably some. Maybe it's our luck. Fish are jumping around. Maybe we'll have some activity. She's like, well, I don't know. Okay, whatever. So I go about tending the, the rod and reels. Maybe 20 minutes, excuse me, 20 seconds later. Rob, I think someone's throwing rocks. I just seen a rock come from the wood line. Plunk, or plunk, you know, in front of the boat area. I look up again. I see nothing. Now, you guys, I'm a little bit, I'm like, Cindy, look, look at the shoreline. There's nobody there. I mean, there's not even a place for someone to stand, Harley. I mean, there were some areas where you could probably stand but it's not like there was a picnic table. There was no park here. It was this forest. The forest went right up to the lake, and it dropped. The tree line literally dropped to the edge of the water. So I said, look, honey, here's the thing. Let me put the rod and reel together and get our lines into the water, and then I'll, I'll, look, I'll look to the shoreline with you. She was like, yeah, whatever, okay. So... Uh, few seconds maybe a minute later I, I for whatever reason i look up into the sky and i see an object falling out of the sky i think you know what the hell is this and as it kind of fell from the sky it, i noticed that it's a rock about the size of a baseball and it lands a good two to three feet right in front of the boat so now i kind of feel bad for doubting cindy so i go turn to my right to tell her hey honey you know, I apologize. I think someone's throwing rocks. But before I can even utter those words, I notice she's standing there. Now, you guys remember, this is uh, middle of summer. She's got a nice tan. I look at her. She's asphyxiated, looks staring at the, at the shoreline. Her From head to toe, that tan that she had, I mean, her body, you guys, was white. White, pale. So I look to the shore and standing there, and again, we're drifting about 90 feet from shoreline. There's this, this creature standing there. Long, shaggy, reddish brown hair. It had to be at least nine feet tall, but it's standing there and it's all covered in this hair. And I, and I can distinctively see a gray chest in, a, in his gray face. The thing about this face was really odd. It was kind of wrinkled. It looked kind of like a person with, and again, I always tell people I don't mean any offense, looked like a person with Down syndrome, but a much older person. I mean, the eyes were offset and kind of drooping, you know, and it just kind of looked, it looked like a humanoid. You know, unfortunately, a person looking sickly but very tall nine foot it had to be it was like four foot wide and just wow and, and kind of creepy kind of creepy now 
looking at this thing, all of a sudden, its, it's arms were, were set on its side. Then it lifts its arms kind of parallel to the lake. Now it drops its jaw. The jaw must have dropped a good six and a half inches. But the thing, when the jaw dropped, it kind of dropped from its, like, where your ears would be straight down. I mean, it was an engaping mouth. Ear to ear, nothing but mouth. You could fit a bowling ball inside this. It had two teeth up top. Reminded me of, like, oversized dog teeth, like maybe a, a German Shepherd. On the bottom were two teeth more tightly together, like kind of in scissors going up. So like four teeth. And now you guys, and I, it, it leans back. I mean, it didn't really have a head. The head was like, like this. I mean, it had the shoulders were up like past the neck. And it kind of rolled back. And all of a sudden, that, that, that gray skin, you know, the, that gray wrinkled skin it had, it got really taut and tight. You could see like the eyes roll back and it lets out this horrendous guttural scream, yell, roar, all in unison. Whatever lips it had, they weren't moving because it was just coming out of this open and gaping space in his mouth. And it roared. I mean, and, and what and you could feel the reverberation from the power coming from this 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 roar. In fact, it, it reminds me of like a sonic blast. You guys ever see like when they drop a bomb and it hits right square to center, then you see like the, the shock waves kind of expand until it all across like the, the land. Well, it felt like I got hit with that because I take a stumble backward. Cindy, all of five foot two, 109 pounds, was knocked off of the boat. Right? falls into the, the lake and I'm staring at this thing and you guys when I say that it transformed it metamorphosed it looked from that humanoid looking thing it looked like now a demon and I always say it looked like a demon right and you gotta remember when it came to Bigfoot I knew about Leonard Nimoy I knew about Bigfoot when I was a kid in fact, I, pro I looked up, tried to find a couple books in the library because I was interested in it. I did see the Patterson film. So, but I never paid much attention, but I was always into, into monsters and stuff growing up. So I was aware of Bigfoot. But here's the thing. I call it a demon because it looked like a demon. It looked totally different than that humanoid, which is what was petrifying. But what was most scared was this when I go to my right to get her, I, I can't move. I'm frozen. I'm paralyzed. And now the color, the, the blue of the sky, the green of the forest, the red and brown hair of this creature, everything I can see, I'm seeing through a filter, almost like everything's black and white now. I'm scared. I don't know what's going on with my vision now. I don't know why I can't move now. I got to get my girlfriend. So I shake my head, I shake my head, I snap out of it, I get her, I finally, now Now that my color comes back, vision comes back, everything's good, I get her into the boat. Now the most terrifying part even, not that this was not terrifying, but what was really scary is when I looked ashore, uh, this thing is, is gone. So I'm like, what in the hell, you know, where is this thing? Is it, I don't know what this is, is it underwater swimming? towards us is it is, where is it not knowing where this thing is i just turned i just sped the boat around and i just motored right across lake mitchell i flew down that canal i flew all the way across lake cadillac i got it all the way to uh where i where i launched it Cindy's still white as a ghost, shaking, shivering. I, I I put like a beach towel, I guess, we had in the boat to kind of warm her up a little bit. I immediately looked for a place to go sit down because this boat wasn't comfortable at all. We just wanted to get the hell off the water and out of the boat. Find this corner bar slash restaurant. It's probably now about 1230. 
and I was in no mood to see people. Thankfully, there was like hardly nobody in there. There was like two or three people. So we go in the, the door of this, this bar, go to the back far corner of the bar. We sit down. Barmaid comes up to us. Cindy, not a drinker. You know, I mean, unlike me, you know, who likes to tip a few, she didn't like to drink. She didn't smoke. Barmaid goes to her, ma'am, can I help you? What would, what would you like? She goes, I'll have a bottle of Bud Light and a shot of Jack Daniels. And I said, yeah, she's, uh, then I knew she was messed up. Then I go to the barmaid myself. I said, yeah, but make, give mine a, make mine a double. She takes that shot of Jack. She throws it down like a champ, like she's been drinking for 30 years. Wash it down with the Bud Light. I do the same. So we now look at each other. We're making now we're first time we're actually making eye contact with others. And she says to me, What do you think that was? I go, I don't know, honey. What do you think it was? She goes, I think it's maybe that Bigfoot creature. And it's the first time she and I have ever spoken about Bigfoot ever. I knew about Bigfoot. I didn't even know that she did. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I think it might have been that Bigfoot creature. And then I'm thinking, but it didn't look like the one that I saw on you know, way back in the day on, on uh, In Search of, Patterson Gimlin film. So she says, should we call the DNR, the, the authorities, report this? And I'm like, no, you know, we're a couple out-of-towners. Now we're sitting in a bar, not going to believe us. You know, we kind of look foolish. So we both had decided to end our, our little fishing trip, our vacation, if you will. So we um, we went home back uh, down south in Michigan. Southern Michigan is where I live, southeast Michigan. And um, so we immersed ourselves. As soon as we get home, you guys, we're on the Internet. You know, I never use YouTube except just to watch like live concerts from my favorite bands throughout the years. Never used it to look up stuff. Found all these videos on Bigfoot. Saw the Patterson Gimlin film on it again. Nothing, I could find nothing that even resembled what I saw. Now, the humanoid looking down syndrome looking thing was kind of, I seen things similar to that, but not that demon transformation. I never seen anything that looked, did a transformation. Then I found out about other shows, YouTube shows, started doing that, and I, I couldn't find any any credible source at this time in my opinion so we're continuing on with this so what really makes me lose my mind is exactly two months after the encounter out there uh lake cadillac cindy my girlfriend passed away out of the blue and i so told you guys earlier not a big drinker smoker not at all First time met that bar's first time. So her mom and I, not the best of friends, told me it was a heart attack. I didn't get a chance to talk to any doctors or nothing. Her mom was just kind of not nice to me and left it at that. Never found out the real cause. So I, at this point, you guys, I'm thinking this creature, when it did that, that yell where we, you know, got knocked back, where I lost my vision or it turned black and white. I thought that had something to do with it. I thought maybe her insides got messed up because of this. Because as I said, five foot one hundred nine pounds, and you know, at, and I'm like two hundred pounds, you know, five nine two hundred, and I was jolted. So I can only imagine what happened to her. She's now she now passes. I lose my mind. I owned a, a bar. I owned a bar. I, I went to my um, my manager. I said, look, I'm taking some time off. I got some things I got to straighten out. Here are the keys. Do me a favor. When I come back, I come back. Take the money. Put in the bank. Please don't rip me off. I've known you for four or five years. I got to trust you on this. I didn't go back to work for six months, you guys. That's how bad I was. I was distraught over the death. And now I'm thinking that this thing killed her. In fact, I was so livid that I, if I had a machine gun and a grenade launcher, I would have went back to the forest and I probably would have tore the place up looking for this thing to kill it. 
this today i don't think that way of course because you know it was in 2018 and and that kind of set me on my journey you know um and again you know thinking back that's why i do what i do on the show you know because again just telling the story right now and i've i've said it many times i feel relieved and good because it's therapeutic that's what the bigfoot mission rob channel is all about too letting you people share their stories a safe place to go because i didn't have a safe place to go nobody believed me i couldn't trust nobody until i finally found a good group of people that i told my story to that made me feel better and helped me with all this stuff i was going through so yeah that's why i do this today it's not for fame and fortune it's not for, to prove these things exist i know they exist I'm not a believer, I'm a knower, and I tried to convey that message to people that, look, be aware of your surroundings. I went out fishing, I ran into something that I didn't expect to see, ended up in death, tragedy, but on the positive side, I love what I do today, and that's really how the Bigfoot Michigan Rob name started. I live in Michigan, I saw Bigfoot, and I'm Rob, I am Bigfoot Michigan Rob. And that's my story. Thank you. It was great. You know, this is kind of the hardest kind of uh, interview to ask questions because you've been through a tragedy. And I don't want to, <laughs> if you feel like if I ask something that's too personal, whenever tell me. Yeah, you know, yeah I, I'm pretty well past that. And I don't mean to sound like I don't care because trust me, man, two years of crying telling that story. I'm finally three years later over that. So. But and no, you know, I, I think she's in a good place. I, you know, life does have to go on. That was in 2018. So I do have a good support group of like people like yourself, even, man. You know, I mean, the community, for the most part, we know who the, how shall I say, uh, the assholes are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. And, you know, I, I, I take a lot of notes because I take these interviews seriously. And one of the things I've noticed with your story, with a lot of other people who came on here recently with stories, is everybody's almost saying the same thing where the size of it is about nine feet. I heard that from you. I heard that from Jeff, uh, Marty from uh, Nona Boss. The one we saw, we could tell that's nine, ten feet. So everybody's saying the height is exactly about nine, ten feet. But another thing you guys are all saying is it's like it's warning you guys – Everybody had like some kind of warning. What I mean is somebody heard knocking. Uh, I know Jeff had a piece of a log thrown at him. Right at it's him. almost like yeah. saying, get out of here before you even start coming up here. And since that then, was, you water, is that how you feel yeah. now? Like it was warning you first to get out of here? Well, back then, no. Again, when this first happened... I didn't think there was any warning. I just thought this thing was a menacing beast that brought us, wanted a piece of us, right? Now, again, since getting involved with this, I've spoken to many people that, yeah, warning sign. I spoke to several people who said maybe there was kids around, right? And it was giving me a warning to stay away from their family. And then somebody said it could have been possibly a rogue you know, a lot of these creatures are like socialized creatures, right? And they do, they they travel in, as a group, husband, wife, kids, and, uh, and uh, cousins. I mean, it's like a, a socialized family, right? And a lot of times these rogues, they get disbanded or kicked out of their group. So those are the Bigfoot that are really ticked off. And they're the ones that you got to be on to look out for. I've heard this from other researchers, from their opinions, you know. But to me, it makes a lot of sense, you know, and... I spoke to some some mediums that kind of told me it's kind of the same thing. Um, they told me things about my encounter that I never made public that they told me about that I, I'm like, wow, you know, that really took me aback. Yeah. Like, how well, did you know this stuff? So I've had, a, again, over the last five years, I've spoken to thousands of people. Well, thousands is high, hundreds at least, right? Hell, I've interviewed 100 people on my show that are all Bigfoot researchers, so I, I have a pretty good, pretty good idea. But I will say this. <clears throat> I don't care what any researcher tells me. I'm still not convinced. I saw it was an actual real Bigfoot, man. Really? Just, yeah, I mean, it looked like one in the onset, 
but that metamorphosis, you guys, it looked a hundred. It looked like black versus white. I mean, it, it just it looked like it looked like a demon. I always well, say demon, well, and I'll never question. not say that. So the question wasn't asked like later on, but I'll just ask it now. Now, I know it's hard for people who who are on the fence about believing a Bigfoot, but when you bring out the word dogman, they're you know if you're on the fence, they probably ain't gonna believe a dogman. Now I hear dogman stories that they look more demon like so if you believe that dogmen do exist what if that was a dogman and not a bigfoot you know that mouth was just so big i mean when it opened that mouth and yelled and screamed i saw this i did see four distinct teeth two on the top two in the bottom its eyes roll back it got to i mean it, it looked it it looked demonic it did not even look like an animal it looked like something from hell hmm. no really it, it really was scared i mean I still will dream about it occasionally. In fact, Sibylla Irwin, who was a fantastic, the best, she does the best renditions of Bigfoot. I've had a couple of people draw them for me and not even come close. This woman, I had her on my show a couple months ago. We're working together. We're doing the, the, uh, the Down syndrome looking, more human looking one. And we're also going to do my demonic looking one. We're working on that. It's, it's and we've been working on this for like three months and we're not even ha she's so in intricate we're not even halfway done with the first wow. one so when they come out and it's this first one is starting to really look like it so i can't wait for to show people to explain it because it did they is black piece of paper and a white piece of paper two different looks totally and it looked like that so that's why i believe i don't think it's a demon okay but it certainly metamorphosed into something, and I certainly think it had to be something paranormal or supernatural. I believe that today. Uh, Rob, have you ever seen the way uh, when they film gorillas and the actuaries, like people just film them on video, and then people get a little too close to the glass, and the gorilla yeah. changes its whole facial structure? Like one minute it's cool, calm, and serene, and the next minute it's like, ah, you know, like, yeah, you know is it something like that? Like, you know, yeah, you know what, you know what, it reminds me of like the baboon, right? Yeah, right. How, you know, it's got, it looks still an ugly creature, but that its mouth opens, all the teeth. Right. That type of metamorphosis did take place. It was kind of like that, yes, where okay. it just totally looked different. Now, of course, I don't think this was a monkey or, or, or an ape, but that, what you explained, how he explained how these gorillas, what you see behind the glass, yes, I mean, similar to that, but the, okay. obviously the way they looked was, of course, it looked like a human turning whatever. Yeah, and the gray tone of the skin, like what dark gray, light gray, ash color. It was like, it was like a light gray, like a light, just like a light dull gray. That's and not the first time I heard that that the skin was that grayish color. Yep. Now I've heard black and stuff like yeah. that, but, I, but uh, black and gray for the most part. The reddish brown hair I've heard a lot of people. I've heard black hair, brown hair. Um. Yeah, so, but I've never heard like because I didn't, I couldn't really get, a, 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 I couldn't tell what the eye color was on the first when it looked like a human, but the eyes were like black when it rolled when it yelled. But the eyes roll black. You couldn't even see a pupil. I mean, it was the entire eye, and the eyes were shaped like a, a egg turned sideways, just black. From eye to eye, how far in between do you think they were separated? I think, from? man, it was probably. From eye to eye, the head, it was probably, if I had to guess, five, maybe like five inch spacing, you know, big, it was humongous, humongous. And that hair made it even look bigger because it was out bushy and just long all over. And what about the, did it have that cone shaped head? <laughs> well, like I say, no, but the head was, from what I do, the head, the shoulders were up like this. Yeah. The head yeah, was like I sitting, not really, no. Yeah. I couldn't really, I to be honest, it had so much hair that I couldn't tell if it had a conical shaped head or anything. But you know, if that thing got his hands on you, it was all over. Dead for sure. Yeah. Oh what, yeah. Um, what's intriguing about your story is is I try to find connections, you know, w with myself and all that. I mean, you know, you, you, that's what you do. You listen to yeah. try to find connections. The roar is what is getting me because I remember when we heard the roar. You felt it. It was not a bear. It was something that you can't explain. It was a roar that you felt it right in here. And you knew mm -hmm. that was something different. And so, because you, you said you 
felt it on the I inside. Know. I felt. Oh, I felt it. Like I said, it's hard to explain. I'm trying to explain. You guys have seen the pictures of like that atom bomb being dropped, right? Yeah. And then, of course, you see the shock wave come off of it. Yeah. How it's rolling. That's how it, I didn't see that, but that's kind of how I describe how it felt. Yeah. And I was like, felt boom, it. Hit you. Yeah. That's what we felt. That's what we knew. Like, what the hell? Because you felt it. And you're a lucky guy because it could be even way worse because you're, you said your girlfriend at the time fell off the boat. And yeah. you were so scared, you were frozen. A lot of people who, you know, even getting shots, they'll go, they'll go wide, and some people pass out. Oh, what yeah. would have happened if you would have passed out? I mean, you finally got the senses, but so when you're frozen, I mean, how long were you frozen for to the point where you had to get her out of that water? Because I don't know if she was going to drown or not. I don't know how deep it was, but that's got to be scary for you. Yeah, you know, and you bring up a good point really quickly too. What? How? I didn't even know that she passed out, right? I'm thinking if she was frozen like I was, she probably would have drowned. Now, this whole encounter probably takes less than 20 seconds. I mean, I say it, it sounds, but it was just, fat. it was boom. And I just remember looking, looking, it was probably under 10 seconds before I broke free and got out of it. You know what I mean? To get from the frozen state, the paralyzed state to her, probably 10 seconds. I wonder if that acoustic blasting of sound is something that they just do like to protect themselves you know they they uh, they they i don't know they release that guttural cold blast because they know you know anything that gets hit with that infrasound it's going to scare the shit out of them they're going to take and off gives it enough oh. seconds yet yeah, they're frozen I, then they take off yes that's no, I, I, I think, mechanism. Uh, anthony i think it's a great defense uh, defense mechanism and now the more that I learn about these things, I think that is, uh, I think that, I mean, hell, you guys, if you heard that in the woods and didn't even see nothing, would not would that not scare you? Well, I, I've, up, actually, um, I've actually been out cutting wood up in the Poconos at like okay. 4.30 in the morning. And I heard one from the, and I was on a hundred acre piece of property with just our cabin on it. Yeah. I heard one out in the woods on the left, maybe like, I want to say six miles out, it, it sounded like. And then another one to the right, and they were screaming back and forth to each other. But I was in the middle cutting wood for the fireplace up there at wintertime. Well, it was like October. And I think I got in the way of them meeting each other. Oh, okay. And that one screamed. And that, but I felt that reverberation go through my body. Yeah. I mean, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. I, didn't, I didn't physically see them, but I mean, I'm up yep. there all the time. I know that wasn't no bear or coyote or no, nothing like that is going to make you feel like that. It, it felt like I grabbed the speaker and turned the bass all the way down and the treble all the way up and, and hugged it. That's what the feeling <laughs> felt like. Yeah. No, and right. It it's, it. Right. Even, yeah, I remember now that you mentioned that years ago. Remember when the it was it was in, they had the studio monitor speakers. I had the big old Infinities with a big ass bass. And you, yeah, you can hear that. Ba-boom, 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 right. ba-boom. Yep, just that's like that. Feeling, man. That's the feeling. And and so I do think now that I think there was a warning, get the yep. hell out of here oh, of yeah. some sort. Because I packed up and I, I, I stopped cutting and I went right inside and got my gun because that's how scared I got. Because mm -hmm. I knew that wasn't normal when it happened to me. I knew that wasn't normal. Yeah. It shook me. I got shook. And I'm the little guy. I mean, I'm I'm only five nine like you, but you know, I'm I'm two hundred pounds too. You know, yeah. I'm not I'm, I'm not scared of anything. You know what I mean? But I yeah. got shook, and I went in and got my gun. That's how shook that sound. I never heard yeah. nothing like that. And yeah. No. Me. Uh, again. <laughs> me either. And uh, I'll never forget it. That's for sure. And it's like, I mean, you know. Uh, and I always say it's a lot of people have had the good encounters. Mine was kind of not good, but you know it's funny because the first when I first seen it, looking like a person, it didn't really look intimidating. No, yeah, nine foot, four foot wide. That was just intimidating Huge. enough, right? But it, it, but it just looked like it was just like for that first instance, it just looked like it was just kind of just there until it just still let out that roar and change the look of itself it was just really frightening man and i'm trying to like i said i'm always trying to get connections here anthony oh, yeah. where's you where you heard yours was it possibly by a lake also 
Um, I was up in a Pocono. I mean, there was a lake, but I mean, it was probably maybe like uh, a mile away from me. The lake. Because the only reason is because like Nona Boss oh, was. was at basically a lake. Jeff Harding was basically at a lake. Yours was basically at a lake. Yeah, Mine was not a lake, lake, but we have what we call poison metals. That's in the Sierra Mountains above Coarse Gold. If you ever watch movies, Meatballs 2 was in Bass Lake. Yeah. Bass Lake is the area that we were in. You know, there there was there was there. So it seems like they do hang around the water area, especially if they have family and babies, you know, well, that, see, and all that. Now that you bring that up, it, the female that the one that sounded more female to me was where the it wasn't like it was a pond. It was more where that pond was. Maybe the male was going to meet her by by that pond because it was a, a source of water. Maybe they were uh, going and, to meet and her food, fish. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. You know, I, like I said, I didn't see the actual thing. I just heard them. You know, and I I think I was in the way of them meeting each other. But um, mm -hmm. I think you met one Rob that maybe got like you said got thrown out of a pack and it was on its own. Because I think they, they domesticate, like families, you know, like yeah. father, wife, children, you know, mm -hmm. and they all hang out in that group. And maybe the one that you encountered was just too violent to hang out with that group. And it went out on its own or whatever. And, or protecting uh, you, its kids. You it. Well, I, I'm drawing that I, I That is my way of thinking. Yeah, I don't think it was like the devil or the demon incarnate or not like that. The thing about the, the transformation is pretty crazy, though. But I tend to agree with what you said, Anthony, and I've talked to a lot of people that's the same suggestions. And another thing, too, that I find pretty common, because you guys, we all do shows and stuff, and you guys know that I do encounter stories for people from to subscribe to me or just send an email. And a lot of people, man, they, they're, a lot of them have rocks thrown at them when they're on a fishing boat. Mm -hmm. A lot of them at their campsite will have pine cones thrown at them. A lot of them at night will heal the roars of in the yeah, which I think is suggesting, hey, you know, stay stay in your lane type of thing. Yeah, right. You know? So and so a lot of that, a lot of that data is good data because it it ha it's not it happens more than you would think, right? Agreed. These encounters, these encounters, without a doubt. I mean, especially that people that live up in rural areas where, you know, Sasquatch are, like, sighted commonly, you know? It's like, yeah. you know, they could see one, you know, three, four times a week. Of course, they're in that rural area. They might be, they might have a home where they're around the area where they hunt or feed or get water or whatever. And I think that they just don't report it because they see it so often, a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they don't want to be told that they're crazy or whatever. I think it happens a lot more than we think. So yeah, it's funny too. I went up this two years ago. I went up north. I went over the bridge, Mac, over to Mackinac Bridge, and I went to this little town called Hessel, Saint Ignace, and uh, I'm there with a buddy, and we go stop at a local bar. And it's funny though, because here down here where I live, you know, you don't talk about Bigfoot. People look at you like you know you're you're a nutcase. Yeah. So, guy bar bartender comes up to him and goes, "Hey, uh, you from out of town? Yeah." He goes, what's you up here just vacationing? And it was two guys, so he made it like, oh, you guys hunters? Or he said, no, we, we're just, you know, coming out to do some exploring. So we were kind of didn't want to make mention that we were actually going looking for <laughs> Bigfoot. He goes, you guys looking for Bigfoot, aren't you? I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, don't feel bad about it. Everyone does. They're all around here. I'm just very nonchalant. Like, yeah, it's like a deer running running through the woods. That's something. what I'm talking about. To people yeah. that live in those areas, that's how I feel yeah. it is for them. Like it's a common occurrence. Yeah. But to the yeah. outsider, you know, we're assuming that, you know, they're so secluded or whatever, but I, I think they're really not in some cases. Yeah. yeah. And I see your point where if you're in your own home area, you might talk about it more because you're in an area that you know people, but you're when you're in an area that you don't know anybody. Right, and it's harder to even tell the story because you don't yeah. you don't know anybody there. You know, right. you're not comfortable. You're not yeah, exactly. yeah. for sure. It's just scary. Um, I'll ask you one last thing, and uh, I'll do my final thoughts and all that. If if you have one advice to tell a couple, a single person, whoever is going up in the woods, what would be that one advice you would give that person? And doesn't matter if they're searching for Bigfoot or not. What would you tell them about walking into the woods? Keep your head on a swivel and be around, be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, definitely. And not even for, and for anything wolves, bears, humans. 
True. And you never know about, you know, Bigfoot. You know, it's really, really quickly, my brother now that he knows about my encounter, he's a hunter. And when he goes in the woods now, now he looks for the typical Bigfoot stuff, right? Tracks, broken branches and that. And now he's aware. If anything, I could preach to anybody, if you're into the subject, just be aware of your surroundings. And again, if you're not into it, just be aware anyways, because danger could be around any corner. Yeah. Sure. Well, I want to thank you, Rob, for jumping yep. on and telling us your story. It's, I think it's no, going to my pleasure. It's yeah, going to help a pleasure, lot of yeah. people. And, and I'm going to give my final thoughts, and then uh, I'll see everybody next time. I'll see you guys behind the scenes. If you listen to his story and a lot of the interviews that I have been doing lately, there's a lot of connections between the stories, nine feet, ten feet. And you heard, you're learning that they're, you know, you know, they're by, they can be by water, by a food source. And you heard it from everybody, not just Rob, that if you do go out in the woods and stuff, you should go at least with two people. And one of the important things that Rob have said that you should know the area that you're going into, kind of know it, have a map or have something with you. Because knowing the area is going to help you so much because not just because of Bigfoot and coyotes or animals and bears, you can get lost. You know, I know this is sounds stupid, but if you're going to the woods, you never know, get a big blob of, of, of yarn, tie a yarn into a tree and have it with you. So you find yourself a way out because if you don't know the area that you're in, you're asking for trouble. Because think about it. If you're about to get lost, then you're hearing sounds and unnormal sounds you know that could be scary itself so you gotta be safe you gotta think smart and learn your surroundings and even if you're not a bigfoot believer watch some videos see some structures that people say that they leave behind some people say they leave like a uh, looks like one of those indians type of huts you know broken limbs a certain way scratches on a, on on some poles because those scratches could be from a, a bear fresh ground look at fresh prints on the ground you know when you're a hunter when you go out hunting for deer and stuff you actually look at poop and you try to see how old that poop is that's what hunters do so there's so many things you gotta look around look at your surroundings because you never know you never know it could save your life you know I feel that this is another Bigfoot that was saying, hey, don't come here. Get out of here. The reason is, was it um, was it just a pissed off Bigfoot? Or was it protecting its babies? Because animals will, will tear you apart to protect their babies. You know? And if you don't know what it is, don't chase them. Don't be stupid like us kids and chase something you don't know what it is. Take it seriously. Be safe. And don't forget, subscribe to Bigfoot Michigan Rob. His channel is awesome. He does a lot of it with Texas uh, Tech, which you guys saw his uh, interview about his Dogman encounter. You know, they're really good channels. They're a safe channel. They'll listen to your story. They don't call you crazy. They don't. They don't say we don't believe you. They listen to everybody's story. It's a safe zone to tell your story to get. Because sometimes by telling you a story. It helps you it, it, it helps you it, it gets it off your chest so subscribe to his channel subscribe under the fight as far channel and like always i'll see you next time on the paranormal highway